welcome back to Rose of Green. Hope you guys all having a great week. Um, hope you like that little new intro thing I added. I know it was a little shaky. Uh, I'm going to start doing some editing there soon. I'm going uh, to be getting some new setups, some uh, new computer or like a Mac Pro or something uh, for my editing. So uh, that's something to look forward to. I'm going to start doing more editing in my uh, videos. But uh, first off, I want to say thank you to the new members. Uh, thank you to Neon Mike, Ron RBX, gr and Growing for Life. Thank you guys for becoming members. If you want to become a member, hit that join button beside the subscribe button. If you don't see it because you're on an iPhone, there will be a link below down in uh, the description because you need to go onto uh, like Chrome or like a desktop uh, browser or something. But anyway. Not to worry about that. Another thing, the winner of the giveaway of that grow light on my other channel is Da One Skitter. So D A One Skitter, you're the winner. I will comment over there that you're the winner, uh, just to let you know. So get get in touch with me after I uh, comment. I'll give you my email or something. But uh, yeah, so you're the winner of that light on my other channel. My other channel is called Rog Grotech. That's also down in the description. And you could find my Instagram handle down there as well. So uh, I just thought I would hit on that. But uh, anyway, let's get on to these plants. I will show you something that's starting to get a little heavy in here. You can see we have coal is starting to fall over right here. I've already had to put a bunch of uh, hangers up there because that whole plant back there just got too big. And uh, she started to fall over. And just uh, they can't handle her that much. Uh, this one here, this pheno here, she's got a little bit of fox tailing. That's not from heat or the light. Uh, you can even see down below how the buds are shaped and they kind of like have that fox tail look to them. So it's uh, it's just this pheno. So uh, this one over here, this is the purple one, the purplisher one. Uh, I'm really gonna. I'm going to cool the temperatures down here at night for this girl, I think, because we're going to see how purple we can get her. So we're only in, uh, we just started week six. But uh, yeah, but first I'm going to show you, these are the hangers that I use. These are the best ones that you can find. And then there are uh, these ones here that are called yo-yos. I have them all on my Amazon store. These ones are kind of crappy because it's a peg. And then I always end up losing the pegs and stuff. But uh, all you do with these ones here is you bring them up. You just got to find uh, you got to find a bar or something, so like that. So I'll just take it like this. It's hard to do this with one hand. I'll bring it down like that around the light, and I'll just hook it up to this cola here. To bring her back up. Oh shit! All right, so I got her hooked up there now. Uh, I'm kind of chuckling at myself. It was kind of difficult to do with one hand, but uh, now you can see she's uh, she's done up. I got her hooked up to the stalk, and then she's strung up to the top. So taking weight off your colas uh, will allow your plant to continue to keep on putting on weight. Uh, this one in the back here, I'm going to have to support her here soon as well. She's uh, she's a fairly big co cola, and uh, she's dense. All of these plants are extremely dense, so yeah. So if you take the weight off, uh, they will continue to grow. But uh, a lot of plants, uh, including like tomatoes and everything else, uh, if your branches start folding over and laying on the ground, they stop putting weight to that branch so that uh, so that it doesn't break. The plant just knows better uh, and knows what to do. So. But uh, anyway, I wanted to just get in here and show you guys something. Uh, so it's a little late now because we're in week six, but all this small little stuff here should be removed off of uh, your plants. You can actually probably smoke those little buds, but uh, they're just little airy buds, pointless buds, uh, good for uh, making some hash or something if you wanted to. But uh, that's why I, I like to remove all that from my bottom how you can see here so that all of that energy goes into these buds so 
Um, we're gonna have quite the episode today. We're gonna go outside and uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna do a bit of training there. We're doing a compost tea and a bunch of other stuff. So I'm trying not to make this too, too long. I will give you guys a couple shots of these girls and how good they're looking. You just see they're starting to put on some good frost. And they're, uh, they're just looking very good. It's a very nice plant. I hope this quality is turning out pretty good. And then uh, we got that girl in the back there. She's swelling right up as well. And then obviously her, she's uh, full weight because uh, she's falling all over the place. So anyway, I thought I would just give you guys an update on on the flower tent. Give you some nice close-ups. Everybody likes the close-ups. Uh, another thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is uh, I have a lot of people have been asking me in the comments about bloom boosters. So. Uh, bloom boosters with organics I really don't use them all that much but I will tell you uh, what works uh, starting around like week four uh, on week four and week six I would give them uh, this here uh, it would be a compost tea and uh, what I would do is I would use uh, two tablespoons a gallon of mineral mineralized phosphate back guano uh, three tablespoons a gallon of uh, kelp flour and uh, half a cup per gallon of earthworm castings and one teaspoon a gallon of unsulfured molasses. Let that brew for uh, 24 hours and feed it to your plants. It's more of a nutrient tea than it is a microbial tea, but you do have the castings in there so you will get microbes as well. So it's kind of a two in one. You're getting a little bit of nutrients and your uh, um, micro microbes that you want to add in so anyway I'll give you another close-up of this girl here I guess we could see now why they call her hypothermia she's nice and frosty and uh, for all of you haters that is done right here guys underneath this Mars SP or FC6500 just a very very nice light this is the newest model out that's got uh, the extra chips around uh, the sides and corners but I also run the other older version and it is just as awesome so uh, let's jump on over and I'll show you guys how the new autos are doing oh no Rose what the hell are you doing you're doing the training without us uh, unfortunately guys I did do a bit of training here Without you guys, I did leave one plant just to show what I'm going to do. But uh, you guys have seen me do the main line a million times. All I did was I topped that one more time and I cleaned everything off of it. As you can see, uh, if you've never seen me uh, do a main line before, you could go back into one of my other videos and just take a look of how I got to that stage. Uh, that was the second topping. So now we're going to have four tops coming off of those. Same thing with the one back there. But uh, this one here... I just started to open it up. Uh, you can see the soil's a little bit hot. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with my amendments. I'm gonna have to back them down a little bit because uh, this the last two veg runs that I did, I had a plant or two that were sensitive to it. So I'm gonna have to back off a little bit. Uh, might be a new batch that they got in or something. I don't know, a different supplier that's just stronger, comes from a different source. But uh, anyway, all I did was I come in here and I push down on these pins uh, just to spread the plant apart because we want as much tops as we can get. So I'm just going to show you here what I'm doing. So I come to this here and I want to spread it out more. So I just bring it over and pull it down. Let's see if we got any more in here. So I got this other pin in here. I'm just going to slide this one out as well. And then uh, let's see. Yeah, we got this one. I'll move it, I'll bring it down. Uh, what else do we got over here? Do we have any more pins? Yeah, so I got another pin there. I'll just take this pin here. I'll put her down there. See how she's starting to open up now? 
Now all of these other tops will start to take off. Uh, I'm going to move this pin down as well. Uh, you want to try not to cover any of the branching that's coming off. So we'll just take her down there like that. And we'll push her down. See how those branches are there? I kind of want them on the outside of it. There we go. And we push her down. And uh, we could let the rest of it basically come up now. Maybe I'll move this one over a bit. I could get two in one. Sorry guys, I kind of got you out of that one. But uh, I could just toughen them up like this, twist them a bit, bend them a bit, get it to fall over. Doing this is good anyways, it really strengthens up your stalks. I have a lot of silica in here right now, so these stalks are uh, already pretty solid. But there we go, now that that one's all flattened out, we are good. So now what we'll do is I'll show you how the autos are doing, and then we're going to head on outside. All right, here we are. So these are the autos. These girls here are eight days old. Since I put the seed in the ground, eight days, that's my day counter. It's nice to be able to keep track without a calendar. And uh, you can see they are doing quite well. They're looking good and healthy. We've got a good breeze in here, so you can see them dancing. That's what you want, so you get a nice, good, uh, good stalk, sturdy stalk. And as you can see, I got these girls on time lapse. So we're going to time lapse this whole thing. I'm going to have a time lapse video when these things are done for you guys. So you can see the video uh, of them from start to finish. And of course, we are underneath the SP3000 by Mars Hydro with our awesome Meanwhile driver, our Samsung chips. And uh, we're dialed down just below 50, we're at 45, and below at these plants we're at about 250 PPFD. Uh, I will turn that up in about three days and I'll bring it up to about 350. So anyway, I just thought I'd give you guys a quick shot and uh, look at these autos. Alright, so I thought I'd start here. This is water, uh, dechlorinized water. I let sit out overnight and I let it come up to temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, now it's good for brewing. What I do here is I use a, a paint straining bag. It's got the perfect size mesh to allow uh, your water and air to flow through, your microbes and everything else. Then I'll just add a little flat rock or something, just anything for weight, uh, because we want this to sink somewhat and we're gonna have so much air in here, it's gonna wanna push it up. So what I use here is I use Boogie Brew, uh, part A and part B for outdoors. Uh, it's just uh, easier than mixing up worm castings and everything else because that's basically the only microbial tea I'll give them anyway is like a worm casting tea. So this already has uh, my worm castings, uh, hummus, uh, biochar, and then it has other plant material and everything else in it. So uh, you can get this in the United States or Canada. It's uh, not too expensive. You use uh, half a cup of each per five gallons. So that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I'll put in uh, about half a cup. That's about half a cup there. And then this is part B. There we go. So we got part A, part B there. I put the stone right inside so that it keeps it nice and aerated. I somewhat bury it. And then what I will do is I will bring this paint strainer bag up to the top. I'll try to leave a lot of room in there so it can move around freely because it becomes packed pretty easily if you don't do it this way. So I'm just going to take some of my trusty twist eye you've guys seen a million times. Cut it off. And I'm just going to twist tie it around. And it doesn't matter uh, really how tight you put it. You just don't want your um, air rock to come out. So then you can just move this up here. Just put it in here. You want a stick or something to go over top. 
can dunk it a little bit. Oh, that color is already changing. And I have a four inch stone in the bottom. And then I have like a one inch stone in with uh, my mix. And then that's the pump that I use over here. It's like uh, 600, per gal uh, 600 gallons per minute or uh, per hour. And then I'll just uh, tie it off here. You want to keep it suspending in here. You don't want it. Uh, you don't want it sunk to the bottom. You don't even need a bag. You could honestly just throw all this stuff in here, brew it, and then pour it through the paint straying bag if you wanted to. I just do it this way because it's less of a mess. So once I got that, I do not add a lot of molasses, but I pre-mix my molasses. This is organic, unsulfured molasses. I think it's called uh, wholesome or something like that. So if you put it into warm water and mix it in, uh, it just mixes into this easier and it doesn't put a clump down the bottom and you have to try to stir it and everything else. So um, basically I just put it in warm water, mix it up, and then I pour it in here. I only use about a tablespoon per five gallons. Uh, a lot of people will use up to three tablespoons, but you do not want to fill up your microbes on food. Uh, you want to just give them enough to get them going and get them active so that when you use them, they go straight to work and start breaking down uh, your nutrients and stuff. So I'm just going to uh, go around you here, plug this in, and start the brew. So here we go. As you can see, it's brewing uh, pretty good right now. I'll take you off of this... Uh, just take you off of here you just see how good it's brewing so the pump uh, works pretty good so I got the pump in the bottom circulating everything around and now I got uh, one in that bag as well and you can see how it's filling up with air so if I didn't have that rock in there it would have sunk or it would have floated but uh, that's it. Now I'll come back in 24 hours and uh, we'll mix this uh, one to five. We'll dilute it one to five and uh, use it on the plants. As you could see, I added in some straw uh, around all of these plants. And I do that so it helps hold in the moisture and uh, it helps protect your microbial life and your top layer. So uh, instead of this top layer drying out, it will now, uh, the straw will now hold moisture in there. So uh, I just wanted to start off here too. I came in here and what I did is I super cropped this one and I super cropped her because now I want all of these tops here to come up. So I thought I would do that instead of topping her and then she will eventually go through that hole there. But you could just see she's gonna be a really, really bushy girl. So we're gonna do this one over here a little bit differently. Uh, these branches we're gonna train through. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna take off this very bottom one. There we go. Now it's uh, cleaned up like the rest. And uh, we're gonna start pulling these branches through uh, to keep it nice and short and a round bush. So, but what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna top it, say, here. And now we got those that we will train out like that and that through it as well. So eventually all of these branches, they're all gonna be coming through here and they will be holding it up and stabilizing it all together. Uh, this one here, I started the super crop as well, but uh, I decided I'm also going to top her. So I'm just going to come in here and I will top her right there. And again, all of these side branches like this one here will eventually be going through uh, the cage. So. We just gotta wait for them to get a little longer to start pulling them through. But that's what we'll do. Like, uh, we don't want these girls growing above the fence line because then everyone's gonna know what I'm doing back here. So I gotta keep them under six feet. So by doing that, that's how we do this. We top, keep topping it 
and we keep pulling the branches through and pull it down low and then they become big balls so uh, big tree balls instead of high tall spindly things but we're gonna come over here too I just wanted to show you guys this mainline one and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna top her as well So there we go, and then uh, we'll come over here, there we go. So now we topped her, we're going to leave these other branches here going, but we're still going to kind of like mainline her, because we want as much branches as we can get so that we can pull them through this screen, so that we get as much bud sites as we can get. If I did this my normal regular way, we would only have 16 tops. Well, you can keep topping so that you get 16 and then 32 tops, but I don't want to get all crazy like that because I started this one high, as you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna let all the other lateral branching go and uh, keep training them into nice big balls. That's what we want. I know I keep saying big balls, <laughs> but uh, that's what we want, uh, bush. Uh, bush shaped uh, pot plants instead of tall spindly things that all the neighbors and everyone else could see that only have like three or four tops instead of like 25 30 even 50 but anyway that's it for this stage all right so here we are 24 hours and you can just see how good this tea has brewed up she's gotten nice and frothy and she's ready to go so this is a super concentrated aerobic tea, and there are just millions of microbes in here ready to go. So because this is so concentrated, what I will do is I will mix it one liter to uh, one liter of tea to five liters of dechlorinated water, and I will water that in. I will give the pot plants over there that are hanging out about two gallons, and then I will give the rest to my little garden plants that you can see down over there and uh, we will go from there. Um, I have gotten questions from people if they should add um, bottled microbes to this, and the answer to that is absolutely not. Uh, do not add bottled microbes to your tea that you just brewed. There is absolutely no reason to do that. You just made a, a bunch of microbes in a, in a container with your compost tea. Uh, this is the best, freshest tea of microbes you're ever gonna get. So adding in more microbes is just pointless. And not only that, if you add in one type of specific microbe, say like bacillus or something, uh, instead of your microbes working together, uh, those microbes are just gonna try to take over because you just add an abundance of that one certain type of microbe. So to add in bottle microbes is not a smart idea. Just use your tea as it's intended to do, uh, how you made it and why you made it, and uh, you will be good to go. So I will dilute this now and I will feed it away to the plants. All right, here we are. So what I got here is, uh, this is two gallons of uh, the compost tea mix. And because this is really my first watering in pretty much, I just wanna take it slow and go around the plant and make sure that we're getting it in everywhere so that those microbes get to work and start to seep in. So that's basically all I'll do is I'll just water it in slowly so that it gets working. All right, so now that I'm done watering them in as a tea, uh, that will be it. That's all I'm gonna give them now until probably around August. Uh, that uh, tea is just to bump start everything, uh, the super soil, and just get all the microbiology working in the soil. So now that that's added in, we're gonna be good to go. Uh, everything is just gonna do its own thing now, uh, as long as I keep these moist all summer. So if they completely dry out for some reason, I will probably give them another uh, microbe tea, another uh, compost tea, but if not, that's it, that's all they're gonna get. So all year, these are a water only uh, super soil. But uh, in order for the super soil to work all year, you gotta be in somewhat of a bigger size pot. So uh, probably like a 20 gallon or bigger if you want it to last all year. So uh, the bigger your pot, the longer it will last. 
Okay, so we have an extremely windy day out here today. So uh, any training that I do to these things is just gonna get messed up by the winds. But uh, what I do now is I just come into this caging and I'll start to pull them through and down. Uh, I do that because I wanna keep these things down and short and bushy. So uh, here's another branch over here. We could take that and I would just put it through right there. And then uh, all of the branches that will fit, I will kind of just put through. But as you can see, the window already pulled that one back through. Um, over here, this one's uh, kind of been getting the crap beaten out of it by the wind. But again, I would just take some of these branches, like this one here, put that one through. And then uh, just continue on doing that so uh, as the plants grow I continue to pull them out and in I will be able to keep showing you guys that uh, I'll show you guys how the super crop turned out here that's the one that I super cropped Let's see if we can zoom in on her and then what I did was I pulled her head through here so uh, we're just waiting now we just need a bit more growth and she'll keep going but all in all they're doing good and this is the one that I mainlined you can see she's good and healthy just how much she grew within a few days of my first video uh, showing you but now what I'll do is I will come in here I will take this wire I will move the wire up and pull it down so I'll do that to that side and then I'll do the same thing to the other side but it's way too windy out here, to guys. As you can see, it's a crazy day out here. So I hope everybody has a good weekend. Remember, go check out my other channel. It's got like 1,100 subscribers now. It will be down in the description. Also, hit up my Instagram because I do a lot of giveaways and stuff on my Instagram as well and a lot of uh, behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, guys, have a great weekend. Hit that like button. Remember, hit it right now for me. Uh, help me out with the algorithm comment down below uh, let me know what you, you guys use for a bloom booster if you're an organic grower uh, i'm interested to hear on uh, what you use so anyway subscribe to the other channel subscribe to this one share it wherever you want peace out